Hi, I'm Teresa and welcome to my channel. Today I'm doing a 48 hour readathon vlog to try and get through my absolute heap of arcs that I'll release on the first couple of weeks of June. And I thought I'd bring you along as kind of motivation because I've been struggling to find the motivation to read. So I thought this would just be a fun little video idea. And I just want to get into this very quickly and talk about the books I'm going to be reading. So first up, we've got my current read, which I want to finish, and that is Never Kiss Your Roommate by Feline Harms. So I've actually already started reading for today and as part of my readathon, but today I had 100 pages left of this. This is an upcoming book, it releases on the 1st of June, and it is a sapphic boarding school romance. It's enemies to lovers, they were roommates, all of that good stuff. It's a lot of fun so far, very cute. I'll talk about it more in depth as the vlog gets started, but that's my primary. I want to finish that and I should be able to do that very quickly. I've already read a bit today, as I've said. And then next up, I actually put a poll up on Twitter so that you could pick what I read. So I put four options and I shall put the uh, picture here. I gave them in emojis through this like really horrible emoji combo so you can try and guess the title. I'm so sorry. <laughs> they were probably so bad. But the first one is The Passing Playbook by Isaac Fitzsimons. This one only got 11%, unfortunately. And then next was Meet Cute Diary by Emery Lee. This one got 18%, so this is going to be the third book I pick up. The next one was The Love Song of Ivy K. Harlow by Hannah Moskowitz, which got 56%, so that's what I'm going to pick up first and what I'm going to talk to you about in a moment. And then finally was 1500 Miles from the Sun by Johnny Garthavia. And again, this one I'm not likely to be picking up in this video unless I somehow become a speed reader. <laughs> so yes, my plan for this video is finish the last 100 pages of Never Kissed Your Roommate, read the love song of Ivy K. Harlow in all its entirety, and then pick up and at least begin Meet Cute Diary. Although I would love to read more, but I'm trying to be realistic at my reading speed. So The Love Song of Ivy K. Harlow also releases on the 1st of June and this follows a girl called Andy who is in love with her best friend Ivy and she's kind of accepted that she's just never going to be with Ivy. Ivy's just not the type for serious relationships, she's very much a flings, a one night stands kind of gal. However, when she does the unthinkable and starts getting into a serious relationship with a girl, Andy has to really just confront some of her own feelings and I'm very excited about this one. I think it's just going to be absolute messy sapphics, which I love. So excited to pick this one up. It is 330 pages, which isn't very long. So finishing that and Never Kiss Your Roommate would bring me to 430. And my goal for this video is kind of 500, which would be starting Mute Cute Diary. So I am hoping I can read that much. We shall see. <laughs> And yes, Meet Cute Diary, just very quickly, this follows a trans teen called Noah who runs a blog called Meet Cute Diary where he writes about happily ever afters of trans people. However, when this blog is exposed as fiction, Noah has to fake date to create his own happily ever after that he can write about for the blog that isn't fake, even though it very much is. And this is just a story of friendship, it's very positive, trans joy, all of that, and I'm so 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 excited to be picking it up. It's already out in the States, it came out this month, but it releases at the beginning of June in the UK. And yes, that is the books I want to read, that's my plan for this vlog. I'm gonna do it over Wednesday and Thursday, so it's Wednesday morning at the moment. And I'm excited, I'm hoping I can read heaps, I'm gonna turn off my phone for a lot of it and just, well, I need it for vlogging, but also just not use it. And I've not got too much planned, I'm about to film a video, which is why I've just done this with camera set up like this and I have an appointment later on but that's it so let's get lots and lots of reading done. <laughs> Hello so I've filmed my video I've done basically everything I need to do today other than that appointment later on and I finished Never Kiss Your Roommate by Feline Harms so this one's probably not one of the main books I'm going to talk about in this video because obviously I have just finished it but yes as I've said this is a boarding school romance. It's sapphic, it's enemies to lovers. We follow a new girl showing up to the boarding school um, and she makes friends with this boy she meets there and then she gets to her room and her roommate's very closed off. She's quite mean to be honest and they just don't get along. But of course this softens and we get our lovely sapphic romance. 
I was sent a digital copy of this one by Wattpad Books and it's very exciting because this book was actually originally published on Wattpad. It's so bizarre because I've not read a Wattpad story in years. It's really shot me right back to my early teen years because it does have a lot of the kind of tropes and dynamics that you find in Wattpad stories. A lot of the like over dramatics and corniness and cliches but it's in such a like, comforting way to get back to this kind of story structure that I'd gotten used to back then and it just it makes me think of like what if I'd found out about books like this when I was that age on Wattpad because everything I read then was incredibly heterosexual because that's all that there was that I could see and I just it it's it's really good and sweet and it's like very much comfort read material it's corny and cliche and over the top sometimes but it's it is good fun and I would recommend it. I will leave a link to my review down below if you want to know a bit more but yes lots and lots of fun it just it's it's cute and I really actually liked how sexuality was dealt with. Our main character really struggles with accepting herself and her identity and I loved the journey she went on. My little lesbian. <laughs> I just love lesbians existing. So yes, adored that. But now I'm going to be picking up the love song of Ivy K. Harlow. And I will tell you a bit more about that once I've started it. But very much looking forward to it. But for now, I'm going to go make lunch. <laughs> Here's today's lunchtime situation. Uh, cheese and ham toasty and starting the love song of Ivy K. Harlow. Hello, so I've read the first part of the love song of Ivy K. Harlow. And I thought I'd talk to you a bit about it. And it's actually, it's evening now. I went to my appointment, read about a strip club in the doctor's waiting room because this is actually new adult, not adult, not young adult, sorry. So that was a fun time. Um, and I also had some uh, just work I had to do and emails I had to reply to in the afternoon. But I've been reading. I read over 50 pages of this and I'm really, really liking it so far. Really like our narrator. We are definitely getting the messy stuff because I wanted. We've got so much lesbian, so much dyke, all of that, all of these words that I like to see in a book. And so, yes, yeah, so as I've said, we follow Andy, who's hopelessly in love with her best friend. And so we kind of meet them in a nightclub and we see Ivy picking a girl up. And this is very, very standard practice. And we, we kind of learn that our main character, Andy, is just hopelessly in love with her. But, you know the feelings aren't returned and she very much just has to pick up after Ivy and clean up her messes. But when she is dropping off Ivy and this girl at Ivy's place, they discover that it has burned down and Ivy has to move in with her, which means she now gets to deal with Ivy and her girls in her house as well. And just lots of fun times there. And I've just got to the kind of point in the synopsis that it references where Ivy picks up the same girl twice and and she's not like feeling feelings yet but it's obviously it's gonna happen and we've got Andy really just not liking this a lot because she's such a hopeless romantic you know she loves her romance novel and you know there's this line it's this is not how Ivy sleeping with saying girl more than once for the first time ever was supposed to go meaning obviously it was supposed to be with her but it's with this girl Dot and I'm just I'm loving the narration and this like group of lesbians just all being pals and oh it's, it's so fun and the scene and everything and it's just a good fun time definitely like an imbalance in the friendship and all of that which is gonna be really fun to explore and just really examining this relationship as well as meeting Andy's love interest or at least who I assume is going to be a love interest this woman called Elizabeth and very excited she's just been pushed to finally reply to her text by Ivy's decision to be with the same girl twice so I'm excited to see what comes of that and yes just enjoying it and we are on to the cross stitch and booktube portion of the evening once again still catching up on Reagan's vlogs but loving it and yeah just gonna go chill and read more I've read 100 pages and it is very very good so far Hello, so I just wanted to do like one last check in tonight. I've read over halfway through this, I think I've read like 170, 180 pages. 
which is over my goal for today, which was 250 total. So we're doing good. And I'm going to keep reading. I'm just absolutely flying through it, as you can probably tell. Good God, my voice was breaking there. Um, yeah, just flying through it. I really love books that kind of deal with messed up characters and that's completely what we're getting here. No one's got their head screwed on, right? Everyone's got some really tough situations that they're going through and things to deal with and, you know, aren't making the best choices and aren't being the best people and I find that so interesting to read. I really, really enjoy it. So this definitely isn't something to pick up thinking like nice light-hearted contemporary, like it is dealing with a lot of personal issues and just there are content warnings at the start but I just also want to point out like drug abuse, alcohol abuse, uh, problems with addiction are also big things, parental neglect and just probably toxic relationships as well. Um, That's not something that the trigger warnings say but like the relationships in this are not healthy and I'm really kind of looking forward to some kind of realization of this and dealing with it and you know there have been like challenges from side characters but obviously it's not kind of cottoned on yet for our main characters and yeah I'm just very interested you get just so much just character work like there's not a lot actually happening in terms of plot but you really do deal with both Andy and Ivy's characters and how they interact with each other and what this new situation with Ivy's girlfriend but she swears she's not her girlfriend dot and what this all means and just it's very interesting very good so far and I'm excited to continue reading more and hopefully get a bit further tonight I don't know how much exactly I want to read but just thought I'd do that because I'm really really sleepy so I'm just gonna finish this vlog off for tonight and be back with you tomorrow morning to hopefully finish it if I don't somehow finish it tonight, that'd be wild. Hello, this lighting makes me look like demonic. <laughs> and it's way later than I planned on ever filming. But I've not been able to put this down and I'm at 82%. So I think I might try and finish it tonight. But anyway, I just read this line and I'm feeling very attacked. So basically, we've signed up to a dating site. And she says... As always happens when any girl shows any interest in me whatsoever, my first instinct is to delete my entire existence and run screaming into the woods because she's got messages and that hits too close to home. That is exactly what I do. <laughs> oh dear. Anyway, loving this. Hello. Good morning. In an absolutely shocking turn of events, I actually finished the love song of Ivy K. Harlow last night. I wasn't planning on it, but I just, I couldn't put it down. I figured, you know what? It's a readathon. We're gonna read. And it didn't take me that long. I actually finished it like quarter past midnight, which is not that bad. So yes, I really, really enjoyed this one. I actually really related to a lot of the things our main character was going through, even though she's in such a completely different situation to me and her life's so completely different from mine. She's my same age, but you know, she's working, not school. She, her and her friends are like out clubbing all the time and drinking and drugs and that's not my scene at all but just so much of her kind of as a character and development she had to go through this kind of realization of just like living her own life and allowing that to happen how it's going to happen and kind of letting go of these preconceived ideas of what her life should look like and just her preconceptions as well or misconceptions really of her best friend Ivy and how what their relationship means for her and all of that it was just it was so well done and I did relate to a lot of it as well and I just really really enjoyed it actually um I'll have a review link below once I've got some thoughts together but for now oh where is it I'm starting Mute Cute Diary by Emery Lee so going from quite a heavy story to nice light trans joy rom-com <laughs> and as well today I need to edit that video I filmed yesterday to upload tomorrow and write a review I think but other than that nothing really planned so I am hoping I can fly through this to reach my goal of, for this vlog which was 500 pages I only need to read the first 70 so I am hoping I can definitely meet my goal and exceed it as well so we'll see how that goes so that's today's main job done. My video's about to start exporting. 
and just listen to my laptop struggling. The poor thing. Hello, I've been a terrible vlogger. I've been terrible at my readathon today. It's 4 p.m. and I've read like 10 pages. <laughs> uh, I've just I edited my video. I made up thumbnail graphics. I made up June releases graphics. I've started writing a review. I've just been doing things instead of reading. And yeah, so I've retreated. I've come downstairs. I'm going to put my phone away. Everything's away. I've just got my book. And I'm just going to sit and read the rest of the day. And just while we're here, can we take a moment to admire the colour scheme here with Meet Cute Diary and my new blanket? Which is very cute and also six pounds in Asda if anyone wants one. <laughs> and also the views. Well, so I've just been reading and I'm now 70 pages into Meet Cute Diary, which means I've read 500 pages for this vlog. Which was my goal, so I'm very very happy with that, especially as it is just the afternoon and I've still got plenty of time to read. But I'm also far enough in that I just wanted to talk a bit more about this book. So, so far it's been really really quick and easy to read and I can really feel that I'm just going to fly through it. And we have met Noah and been introduced to the concept of the Mute Cute Diary, which is a blog he runs which is full of just trans happily ever afters based on their Mute Cutes. And also this conflict wherein a troll exposes that these Mute Cutes are actually fake. And we have now got Noah, who's just this absolute hopeless romantic looking for his own happily ever after. And this guy, Drew, and they have proposed to fake date to help save the blog. And I'm just very, very excited. Got the goods. Just had this lovely fish supper and now I want to talk to you a bit about Meet Cute Diary. So I read up to page 250 before tea. So obviously quite far into the book, that's over halfway. It's just shy of 400 pages total. And I'm not hugely loving it and I'm so upset about that. But I find our main character Noah really, really irritating. And like you're kind of meant to, he's incredibly naive and then his kind of determination to have this happily ever after, he's definitely like ignoring all of these red flags and kind of not always being the best person, the best friend. And I'm just like, get it together, Paul. <laughs> and I'm just kind of, I'm like sensing that there is going to be a shift and I'm just wanting that shift to hurry up a bit because this, as it is right now, it's not bad, don't get me wrong, it's just not living up to what I was expecting to be an incredible five star, I love it from the very beginning book. Um, I'm really just in it for Devin, which is Noah's co-worker and I'm kind of in love with him, so, but yes, that's my little update. I am still just obviously flying through it, not long to go now and I'm excited to keep reading and hopefully get to this shift and get to all this development that I want to see in these characters. Hello, so I have finished The Meet Cute Diary and I basically read this in one sitting, honestly, and now it's like 9pm and I'm like, do I pick up another book? But anyway, I my complaints earlier still stand in that I would have liked this shift I was speaking about to happen earlier, but... I was kind of right in that this shift existed and that this was the point that Emery Lee was making with this book and this narrative followed the kind of path I was expecting it to. I just would have liked it to have happened a bit quicker because I wasn't a huge fan of the first part but the ending was very very good. I loved the resolution. I think it was just perfect for the story and the characters and it really really showed their development and I maintain that I love Devin with all of my soul. <laughs> He's just the sweetest and I, I just want to protect him. <laughs> anyway, Meet Cute Diary, although it wasn't what I had hyped up to be in my head as this um, amazing, incredible five-star read, it was still very, very, very good and I definitely recommend it. I love the message it gives about finding your own happily ever after and not kind of being able to structure life in this way and create this formula for romance that's guaranteed a happily ever after because life just doesn't work like that and yes very much enjoyed it again i'll have a link to a review down below but in the meantime do i pick up another book okay yeah i'm gonna pick up another book <laughs> I'm just really loving reading right now and I don't want to lose this motivation. Um, by my poll, I should really pick up 1500 Miles from the Sun by Johnny Garthavia. However, I am going to 
ignore that and pick up the fourth option which is The Passing Playbook by Isaac Fitzsimons because it comes out a week before it comes out next week so I really do need to kind of prioritise it. So this one follows a trans teen who starts over at a new school following some bullying and he is going stealth and passing. And if things are going great, he's joined the soccer team and, you know, close with his teammates, there might be something more going on there with one of them. However, when a discriminatory law forces his coach to bench him after he notices the F on his birth certificate, he has to choose whether he's going to fight against his regulations or just sit on the sidelines. And apparently this one's just incredible. I've seen so many people love it and I'm just, I'm all for these stories of trans joy. So that's what I'm going to pick up next. Hello, good morning. It's now Friday morning and I just want to very, very quickly wrap up this vlog. There is going to be background noise, apologies, but there's also lovely birds singing just for you. <laughs> so yes, I was able to read almost twice my goal. I've read 967 pages and my goal was 500. <laughs> I'm just in shock in awe of myself. <laughs> to start off with, I read the last 100 pages of Never Kiss Your Roommate by Feline Harms. This was a lovely, just contemporary story. It's a very like comforting and familiar in its structure and I really enjoyed it. Then I read the entirety, 330 pages of um, The Love Song of Ivy K. Harlow by Hannah Moskowitz and again, I really, really enjoyed this one. I wasn't expecting it and it definitely wasn't exactly what I planned but I really really liked it and I really related to a lot of discussions happening and this idea of being the side character in your own story just witnessing life and yeah loved it and then next I read an entirety of Mute Cute Diary on Thursday the second day so 430 pages on the first day and then on to this so this was 391 pages and this is probably my most disappointing book of the vlog and I'm so 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 upset because I really wanted to adore it but I just didn't and that's okay but this was still overall cute I would still recommend it it's a lot of fun even if I wasn't the hugest of fans and finally last night I picked up the passing playbook by Isaac Fitzsimons and guys I'm so in love I'm really 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 enjoying this one so I managed to read 109 pages last night and then a little bit just this morning to finish it off which brought me up to 146 pages total which gives me 967 pages total which is just mind blowing. I am fair chuffed. I have a whole lot of reviews to write now but I am just over the moon with this and I hope that you've enjoyed watching it. I always feel like I do terrible when I'm vlogging because there's nothing exciting to show you because I don't do anything. <laughs> but yes, I hope you've enjoyed. Thank you for watching and I will see you with another video soon.